Hello everyone and welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. Today is October 21st, 2015. You're watching episode 30. Today's burning issue is consumption tax revisited. There's been a tremendous amount of action on this issue over the last two weeks. As you recall, the prime minister reshuffled his cabinet. Those cabinet ministers are now in place and the prime minister has launched a diplomatic initiative that will take him probably to the end of the year. In the meantime, how the consumption tax will be applied and the kinds of things that will be included as taxable items are a hot issue and they're being hotly debated right now. That is our burning issue. As usual, today my co-conspirator is Michael Chuchek. You know Michael Chuchek if you're following Japanese politics. He is the author of the foremost blog in English on Japanese political issues. It is called Shisaku. Thank you very much again for joining me today, Michael. It's great to be here. This conversation just keeps going on, doesn't it? Today we're talking about the consumption tax. We thought we had a lock on it, and then suddenly the finance ministry threw the wrench in and said, we're going to meld this with the my number system. And it didn't last for very long as a concept, but nevertheless, it caused ripples to go outward in all directions. And now we have some major changes in the way that the program is being approached and the way it's being sold. Okay, we talked about my number probably two or three weeks ago, and I think as far as the consumption tax issue is concerned, that's a dead issue. Is that not accurate? Yeah, it's absolutely true. We, okay. we know that the concept that was put forth by the finance ministry, that there would be a refund of the consumption tax increase on certain items, and that that refund would be refunded based on you putting out your My Number card each time you went and made a purchase for the specific items that are, would be exempted from the rise, and that at the end of the year you'd apply to very have cumbersome. that. Very cumbersome. You, you, the longer people tried to explain it, the more clear that it was not was just not functional. Uh, that system, I mean, there's no point in going through the whole story because it seems to be gone. Well, you know, the thing is, is that this, I mean, even for people like you and I who watch this issue, this came out of the blue and it lasted, it had a shelf life of maybe four or five days before it was basically just blown out of the water. It really didn't last very long. It didn't come in in some kind of package. It didn't come in with coordination with other ministries, with coordination with the, the central government. It was seemingly just thought up by some minister of finance bureaucrats, and seconded, seemingly, with, it's still very unclear, by the most important tax person in the LDP, which is, well, was, Noda Takeshi. We should talk about his, what's happened to him. Yes, let's talk about him, but first, let's talk about, you know, the finance ministry is, is a huge ministry. It is the number one ministry in terms of political power and they have thousands of bureaucrats. These ideas are not cooked up in a weekend. I mean, people have spent a lot of time on that. And th what they did was they kind of sprung it on everyone. It was a pretty much a, a cooked cake. They presented it thinking that maybe it would go through. Whatever they're thinking, it didn't go through. Mm -hmm. And they should have known about this based on the history of the consumption tax. And we need to start by first by saying, Currently, the consumption tax is 8%, and it's on all purchases mm -hmm. and, and transfers. Some international transfers are exempt. Uh, most uh, international travelers do not have to pay consumption tax. Either if you show your passport at many retail outlets, they will take the tax off of your purchases. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be a universal tax. And of course, since it's a, on sales, it's regressive. Right. It hits the poor harder, harder than it hit, hits the rich. And that's the political aspect of it. But currently, it's at 8%. It was first proposed during what was basically the bubble years as a part of a way of stabilizing Japan's long-term fiscal balance. Now, that's fine. Uh, you can impose taxes on whatever you want to do. It's just that if you're going to impose taxes on sales, then people will be less willing to buy things. Okay, before we get into that, what does it mean, fiscal balance? Why would a country impose a, a consumption tax on its population? I mean, before 1989, uh, they didn't have a consumption tax. And from what I recall, the OECD countries were recommending that Japan, in order to receive 
some sort of stability that people were feeling a little bit nervous on, they, you know, pretty much recommended in, in a strong way that you need to have a consumption tax and it needs to be, around, you know, along the lines of a global standard, which is, you know, 15, 20, 25 percent. Well, we, we have all kinds of different VATs, we have sales taxes, we have consumption taxes all around the world. And they're integrated in various ways into the general tax base. The right. concept is, is, of course, that everyone mm -hmm. should be paying taxes, but that it's very hard to impose income taxes on the very poor. Mm -hmm. You try to have as broad a tax base as possible. And advisors, both within Japan and outside of Japan, suggested to the Japanese government that they re if they are really not going to go after poor people's incomes, which is what they, is still the case, uh, the, the amount where your, tax, your, your income becomes taxable is quite high in Japan. Uh, if you're not going to go about it through income taxes, then you have to go about it through a broad uh, added on tax to sales. That's the source of the consumption tax. And it was thought up in the late 1970s. It was Im imposed in the 1980s. And it has been the... What the, a troublesome thing. I it mean, has been a... Tr but it has been a cross for the politicians. It's, right. For the politicians, whenever a rise in the consumption tax happens, it's a usually a political catastrophe. Sometimes it's even an economic catastrophe. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's only an economic catastrophe. It, Mr. Abe is basically the first prime minister to survive right. a, ri a rise in the consumption tax. It rose during his time in office from 5% to 8%. It had a huge impact on, J on Japan's economy, but somehow he survived it. And that's, it, we've <clears throat> gone through in these programs, the amazing stability and longevity of Mr. Abe and his ability in spite to get, of. yes and his ability to get over something his getting over a rise in the consumption tax and the the the, the body blow that it gave to the government and to the uh, economy right uh, is something that when historians look back they say how did he ever do it mm -hmm. uh, so we have we're, we're living in historical times no question now we have to set up the framework in that okay it's been a political millstone for every prime minister who's seen a rise. Okay, before you get on there, it, it first was initiated as a 3%, and the prime minister who proposed that was kicked out of he office. He was kicked out of office. Then it went to 4% with another additional 1 to 5%. And within a very short amount of time, Hashimoto Ryutaro was also out of office right. after the, uh, well, it was the, the years of the Asian currency crisis, and then of the failure of Yamaichi Securities and Takshoku Bank. So the, the rise in the consumption tax and the economic effects got all melded together. Mm -hmm. And the... Well, it wasn't serendipity, but it did have a, a, an added impact. It on, added impact on the eventual, on his career. This was a time of economic uncertainty. And this, when it looked back at the statistics, it looked like it really hit the Japanese economy hard. Right. That ushered in an era where the LDP was no longer in power that political party then kind of projected we will raise it from 5% to 8% and then later to 10%. How about that, guys? And then they took a dive. Yeah. In terms of the DPJ government, the LDP government had proposed a, a rise to 10% prior to its being kicked out of office. And the DPJ campaigned on a promise that it would be four years before they would consider a rise in the consumption tax. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a very, right. very supposedly sincere promise. The party didn't keep it. And it proved v absolutely destructive to their hopes and their dreams. Prime Minister Khan came in as a, a pinch batter after mm -hmm. the, the crash of Prime Minister Hatayama's very short time in office. He came in and he came in right out of the finance ministry had, and had, was basically... A under on a finance ministry voodoo and started talking about ri the rise in the consumption tax. There was a, the House of Councillors election immediately after that, and the DPJ did not maintain control. <clears throat> and that, we eventually learned, was the, the beginning of the end for the DPJ right. government because it could not run the, the country with a divided diet. Now, the, the consumption tax, therefore, is political dynamite or the political third rail. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about it, as we are today, 
we're talking about something that politicians are absolutely freaked out about. Yes, allergic. And they are absolutely <clears throat> allergic to it. So now we had the rise from 5% to 8%. It hit the economy very hard. The Abe administration took a, a big hit in terms of its popularity. And just prior to last year's election, Mr. Abe backed off, backed off the automatic rise that was in the legislation and deferred it until April of 2017. Generated a lot of goodwill. It generated a lot of goodwill. It helped, may have helped his election <clears throat> a little mm -hmm. bit, but certainly the, the idea that these things should be predetermined, that there's some kind of plan, took a hit as well. That th this now seems to be a political football, so right. to speak. Now, that image of a political football has been increased mm -hmm. because we now have a concept that when the 10% rise comes into place, not all items, not all transactions will be slapped with the 10%. Many items, and the question is which ones, will be left at the 8% level. Okay, but that's once again, we move forward, we stake out our ground, and then we come back a little bit in order to pass these bills or to get wider consensus. Initially, okay, the, but no, the thing is here, the, it's already the law. He, he deferred the application of the law. Mm -hmm. So this is, you, you stake a claim and it's there, and then you decide afterward, oh no, I, I didn't really mean it. It's a little bit yeah. different politically. Right, but um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, initially it was going to 10% come hell or high water, but with the opposition, particularly with Cometo, um, saying there, it can't cover all all products. You know, we if you do that, the people who are in the lower categories of the economy, people who are uh, predominantly our voters and and people who who belong to our our organization, are going to be hit harder than the normal people, the salaried people, and particularly the, the the rich people. So once again, it's it's staking it out. It might be even in fact like the my number system. They stake it out. It collapses. It doesn't go through. But they get something that's not quite as great, but they get something, they incrementally move that ball forward. Okay, the idea that poor people need to get a break in terms of taxes is a universal all over mm -hmm. the world. And the idea that certain items should not be uh, subject to the consumption tax <clears throat> or a VAT or whatever is also very prevalent. So only a very few countries actually are adamant. Chile is an example, which sets one rate for everything. Mm -hmm. Most countries have a, a lower rate for food and drink, or food only. And in some countries, like let's say Australia, they have a very high VAT for everything except food, but food is entirely exempt, it's zero percent. Mm. And there are many countries that have a zero rate for food, or a variable rate. So Japan is not some kind of weird outlier in trying to set up a, a two rates. What is difficult, however, is that one of the main core bases of the LDP traditionally is small retailers or medium-sized retailers. Mm -hmm. And for them, the imposition of a, two different tax rates is an extra cost. For the biggest Reaching into their pockets. Yeah, for the biggest, largest retailers, they couldn't give a damn because right. it's just a few lines of code and they're beep, 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 right. and, it, and it's, it doesn't matter to them. But for the smaller retails, it's a, a major investment and they've been dead set against it. Mm -hmm. So the LDP secretariat has been trying to figure out what's worth more to us. Having the Cometo with us, and the Cometo is absolutely adamant that food and drink at least have to be uh, exempt. They would like some other things as well, and we can discuss what those things are, but that there has to be two rates. Mm -hmm. It's for them, it's a political necessity, because as you say, the, the Cometo tries to present itself as the, the hero of the, the, the lower the classes, downtrodden, the right. downtrodden. It, it's its basic competition with that vote with the communists. They, they, they fight over the same set of voters. Uh, the Cometo has the advantage of it's faithful, so does the, the communists. Mm -hmm. But there is a, a good part of the electorate that in the, in the lower economic strata who are in play. Right. And, the Cometo would like to say, this is what we were able to drag out of the government and we had to pull really hard. And the more 
you know, angst and more excitement there is in, over this issue, the more the eventual victory will seem to be reflecting upon the power of the Komeito. Right. So that they have a good narrative pushing this whole story. Before we go on a whole lot further, um, I think it's important to point out why the smaller retailers are uh, disproportionately hit by tax increases. And I think one of the explanations, one of the, the, the most uh, salient explanations is if there is a 5% increase or a 8% increase and products are being sold that cost 100 yen or, or 200 yen or maybe 1,000 yen, that incremental increase, it's, I mean, you're, you're passing coins to your, your clients now or to the, the people who are purchasing from you. So rather than moving the price higher, you just leave the price there or maybe you move it to the next 10 yen increment and now they're paying more than mm -hmm. they should and they'll complain or they'll say, you know, you're, you're gouging. Mm -hmm. Or so a lot of, a lot of uh, for example, in a, a coin operated machine and there are thousands of, there are millions of um, uh, self-service machines here in Japan for not only soft drinks, but uh, t-shirts and, uh, and cup ramen and all sorts of things, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Those machines will have to be adjusted in terms of what they can accept. And despite the fact that it's only going to be a 2% rise, and there's no, there are no increments other than 10 yen That's right. increments. Who's going to pay for that, that um, grade up too? Yeah, and it's just, it's, it's just uh, a lot of institutions, and they're not just small retailers. You're right, the, the, the automated machine lobby also, which is very powerful in this mm -hmm. country, they also have a stake in this, and they're not thrilled about it. The other side of the coin is the free-for-all that you and I have been you know, party to and, looked, and been looking at in terms of the lobbying to get your own product right. on the list. One of the blunders so far has been the desire of the Komeito to put newspapers, smart, on the list of things that are essential, not, human, es essential human needs. Right. Now, the eventual proposal that's come out is that newspapers are not. They're going, to be, they're going to be taxed at the regular rate, which means that newspaper editorials recently have been dumping on, the t yeah. on this uh, plan because, well, it's, they, they see themselves as getting hit and they, they, they're, they're being, okay, childish, but what the heck, this is politics. You know, I, I felt the same way too until I heard the argument that it is, the reason why it's considered a, a, um, an essential need is because uh, the population needs to be educated. They need to be um, educated, not educated, they need to be up to date on what's going on to be a contributing member of a, of a vibrant democracy. And I thought that that, that was um, a, a, good, a good explanation for that. And, and it's entirely a reasonable explanation because again, they're, they're, they're not concentrating only on food and drink. They're talking about everyday needs right. is, is the framework that was discussed and that, that has been presented. And you, you, you know that when you have a little bit broader framework like right. that, you, you're going to have to be very careful and select the items that will get you the most political bang for the, for the, for the end. And that's right. And, and uh, although we're talking about printed material, newspapers, books, and periodicals, that sort of thing, it is very unfood-like. But there are even food products that actually are not, you know, considered food items that, you know, their makers, the, the people who produce them, are also pushing. This is, you know, it, it, it is a corn extract, and we make this, and people wear it, and so we want it to be in there, too. That's right. There are all kinds of products that are applying mm -hmm. to be part of the list that are at a lower rate. And the winnowing out of where the line is is, is one of the major sticking points about right. the whole plan. My guess is that the Komeito has the ability to look the, uh, the LDP in the eye and say, this has to go through mm -hmm. and it will happen. Now, Mr. Suga, the chief cabinet secretary, has declared that it will happen. And not only will it happen, it will happen on exactly the same date as the rise in the consumption okay. tax overall. That it will happen on the April 1st, 2017 date and that's when it's going to happen. Now, he's put down his marker there. Uh, the question is, will they have the time in the ordinary diet session? Remember, we we're talking that they're not going to have an extraordinary diet. They have only the 216 diet session right. to 
put through the legislation <clears throat> necessary to make this change. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know... There's, I mean, one of the, our opening statement was that there is a lot of action going on in the consumption tax issue, and the, the doors have kind of busted open. And so there are itemized um, foodstuffs, drinks that are, are listed, and any 1% increase in the tax rate has a certain impact, a certain calculated impact on overall tax revenues. But what I'm curious about is why is, I mean, first of all, what is the uh, nominal tax rate here in Japan? It is, isn't it about 34, 35%? Well, for corporate taxes, it's, it's about 36.58 effective tax rate. But the, the, but, for people, but for people, the tax rate is relatively low. It's right, you're right, it's in the, in the 30s. It's, it's compared to other countries, including the United States, it's, it's low. Real, it's low. Right. And one of the, con the constant carping points is Japanese want to have a European style social Lifestyle. welfare right. system with a less than US level of taxation. Mm -hmm. You can't do both. And we know that that's true. We, we just look at the government's annual budget and we see that half of it is funded by bonds. Right. So they're obviously not getting the tax revenues necessary. Now, the, they'd like to change the revenue system, and that's the whole point behind raising the consumption tax. Now, when the LDP opposed, when the DPJ was in power, the DPJ proposed that there be two separate tax rates for food and drink and for, for uh, other items. The LDP opposed that, saying that, you know, I'm sorry, that there is a fiscal problem, and it will cause confusion. Those two things haven't changed. Mm -hmm. But the LDP is now the bully uh, boy, and now the per now has changed, right. has changed itself. It's, it's singing a new tune, and it's singing a new tune to the fact that they had to fire effectively the person who had been in charge of all of Japan's taxes in the LDP, uh, Noda Takeshi, and replace him with a uh, former uh, Medi minister Miyazawa, mm -hmm. and. Mr. Miyazawa, I mean, he's a fine enough gentleman and all, but it's clear that he's being brought in as a figurehead, where Mr. Noda has been the tax man for the LDP ever since his return from the Liberal Party. He was out of the mm -hmm. LDP for a while. When he came back in, he's been the point man for, for a very, very long time. And unfortunately, he had to take the fall, seemingly, for the finance ministry's bizarre ar and arcane plan to do this refund instead of having it being right at the point of sale. Right. I think the prime minister was pr probably trying to send a signal that there is going to be a step change here. But he did keep Mr. Noda as the supreme advisor to the, the tax uh, committee, didn't he? Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean much of anything except the thank you very much and the door is that way. <laughs> uh, you will bring your things to you later. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, the, it, was, it was really blunt and it was not done in a way that said, you know, thank you very much. It was, please go. One of the important dynamics here is this tension between the Ministry of Finance and the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister shares a role with the Finance Minister, Mr. Taro Aso. He's a very powerful, very influential political figure. And he is Gosh, he's, he was the prime minister uh, just, just recently. He is now the finance minister, the number one, uh, probably uh, the most important portfolio in the cabinet. And um, there's, there's real tension there. I mean, he wants to um, collect tax revenues for, I mean, I guess he, he feels fiscally responsible for, for the nation, but there seems to be an awful lot of tension there. Well, there's always the question to what extent the ministers are independent thinkers versus merely puppets of the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. That's always been a story within Japanese politics. And um, Mr. Aso, for, for all his, his very fine qualities, and he's, he's a very funny person and a very, very interesting person, he's no financial genius. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it has been more often true than not that prime ministers have preferred not to put really bright people as finance minister. It causes too much trouble. It's because it becomes a center, a power center <clears throat> that rivals the prime ministership, the mm -hmm. premiership. It just, it's just too much. So Koizumi, for example, had 
Mr. Tanigaki Sadakaze, who is now the head of, of the Secretary General of the, the LDP, uh, had him specifically because he, he sensed that he would never be able to amalgamate power uh, and become a powerful figure to oppose the prime minister and his own setup, with it, which was based on the Council of right. Economic Advisors within the led by Takenaka. Uh, Hazel, that group wanted to be fully in charge, so having a weak finance minister became sort of the model. Now, I can't say if he's a weak finance minister, but certainly Mr. Aso it, it pl relies on his staff a lot for information. And he's going to be the advocate at that point for tax rises. Mm -hmm. no, no matter that, the fact that we have seen over and over again that the imposition of taxes in an attempt to get fiscal balance has been disastrous for Japan based on sure the has. structure. Now, in the 1990s, American academic uh, critics and also the IMF criticized Japan for its gigantic debt and, uh, and its large deficits, budget deficits, and said, you guys have to get in control of that. Now, since the world global financial crisis of 2008, Japan's predicament uh, has now been seen in a completely new light. And now they say, boy, we were offering really crappy advice. Uh -huh. A few were offering really good advice. Paul Krugman, the, the Nobel Prize winner, for a long time was saying, we have to, you have to do irresponsible financial management. You have to be fiscally irresponsible. You have to be irresponsible in monetary terms to get the economy going on a growth path. And he's still advocating they that. They took that one to the bank. They did not, yeah, they, but, the, but not to the extent that he said. He said, mm -hmm. your, 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 your fiscal stimulus packages are, are too, too timid. Right. Your, fine, your monetary policy is way too tight. You need to go all out. And he turns out to have been seemingly correct. He's still talking about it. Today he has a major blog post in his New York Times blog all about going through what needs to be now done with Abenomics. He, he says, I, don't, I can't say it's really successful or not, but this is where we are. The subject is not dead. We have in the, in the Economist, the uh, uh, economist named Horiguchi has a long piece about continued fiscal irresponsibility. We really, and, and, and monetary irresponsibility, we have to keep going with what we have because it turns out if you go for fiscal responsibility, if you go for the imposition of things like a consumption tax, you kill momentum. Mm -hmm. And that will keep the stagnation going for decades and decades. Right now, it is targeted for a 10% consumption tax. That doesn't mean it's going to stop at 10%, does it? No, it doesn't mean that it's going to stop at 10%. And it's not likely to stop at 10%. And the the uh, OECD and, and IMF and all that have been advocating near 20% That's rates. That's right, 20, 25. For... for and there are countries within the, throughout the world that have these kind of mm -hmm. rates, and they don't collapse immediately. However, right. Japan's basic case has been one where there is little or no growth, and the demographics of the country are such now that there is no, any, no push. That from, makes it looking worse and worse, you know, that, isn't it? That there's going to be a real, you have a, a really, really steep climb to get out of the pit that the, the country is in. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, they might have been able to do something a little bit better, but nowadays, they're, they're stuck. Mm -hmm. And they really can't make these kinds of moves. That also plays into the decision that's going to be made. One of the targets for receiving this kind of financial um, stimulus or the, the financial support from the government are social services, health, welfare, uh, child rearing, and that sort of thing. And that, that um, component is really growing uh, strongly. In the United States, you have a defense budget that takes in about 25% of all tax receipts. I mean, the, the military budget in the United States is massive. And I think that their um, nominal income tax on individuals there is probably at around 40%. Let's say 40%. In, in Japan, it's probably around 34, 35%. They don't have the uh, massive military uh, presence that they're supposed to be supporting, but they do have a lot of people who are retired, getting old, in hospitals, and they have basically a social medical system here. And that's what led to the imposition of the consumption tax from the very outset. 
the they saw this mountain coming down the path. The finance ministry of bureaucrats saw this this actuarial demographic wave coming at the pension and healthcare systems and said, we have to get ahead of it. Right. We have to salt a lot of money away. And that's been their mantra ever since. But the world has changed. Fiscal responsibility nowadays doesn't buy you anything in the world. It was the, the old theory was if you had an image of being fiscally responsible, that means your international borrowing costs would be lower because you were seen as a good future debtor. You, mm-hmm. were, you were reliable. Nowadays, in the, in the year... Gold-based currency? Yeah, we, 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 nowadays, we, we, it's, it's an absolute free-for-all, and we still have the lowest interest rates in history, and this is globally. Mm-hmm. There is no connection between being fisci- fiscally responsible for a country like Japan and the interest rates that are charged and the, si- and the growth of the economy. They're, they're, it's become disconnected. And this okay. concept that the finance ministry and its bureaucrats have... In, have absolutely inhaled uh, it makes it very difficult uh, for anyone who serves there to clear their their minds and say yes but we can't if we do that the economy will shrink yes right. if we do that then the, then retail sales will shrink they come out saying yes we need to raise the consumption tax mm-hmm. because there's a catastrophe waiting in terms of everything mm-hmm. there's a catastrophe in every country and in this case in Japan the issue is growth. Right. If you get on a growth path, then you're starting to wor- whittle mm-hmm. down the, the giant debt. Work on You also, of course, work on the deficits. That's how you get there. But it's so hard to talk the Ministry of Finance out of that. Right. So they have targeted 10%. What is, what, why is it 10%? And what is that, that uh, component of 10%? What is that, that pool of money? What is that that target that they're shooting for, and is that you know twenty percent to go for social services and ten percent to go for railroad reconstruction, or how how do, how do they figure that sort of thing they, out? They figure out they ho- set up a whole bunch of promises <clears throat> of how everything's going to be spent, and then some natural disaster comes and they have to redo the whole mm-hmm. list. That that's what happened with the the triple disaster, the tsunami, and there were extra taxes that were imposed. And that's right. Everything. Everything changes depending on on the circumstances. Ten percent is a, as you said, it's a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. They really want to raise it higher. At the same time, they want to expand the income tax base. They want more people paying income tax. So they want to move the the uh, minimum down lower so that more and more people are participating. So you're hitting the lower classes from both sides. Right. At the same time. They're reducing corporate income taxes. So politically, it should appear like a collapsing house of cards for the LDP, raising the consumption tax, ra- ex- charging more people income tax, and then giving the corporations a break. We should be seeing an absolute collapse of support for the LDP, but we're not seeing that. Again, right. we're, we're in a different situation. <clears throat> in the past, when there was a real competition but now the issue is, okay, there is no opposition. So if you hit the poorest people harder, they are not still not going to go and vote for the DPJ. There's little political payback for right. you know, coddling your corporate, your, your corporate buddies and at the same time hitting poor people. The only people you have to deal with is the Kometo. And at that point, if you can give a stop to the Kometo, which doesn't make any sense, at the same time reducing on some items the consumption tax, but expanding the, ta- the, the income tax base, see, lower income people don't come out ahead. They may even come out behind because of all of this. Mm-hmm. That doesn't matter. As long as the Kometo says, this is what we want, and if you give it to us, we're, f- we're good with that, then we're done. Now, that's... A, that sounds like where it's going, though, right? No, but that, but that's that's a luxury that the LDP and Mr. Abe have that no other leaders and other parties and other countries have. That they mm-hmm. can absolutely mess with people and not have to worry about paying a political price. That's the basic issue, right? right? Okay, so we have a tax increase that's coming. 
Komeito says, you're hitting the uh, people who belong to our organizations and actually we represent all Japan. So you should reduce those at least on foodstuffs so that the lower income people don't get hit. When it came up with the my number system, it was capped at what? 4,000 yen? Uh, a month. It was. It had a monthly figure, and, and you it, had to submit to it. It was just. It was just so cumbersome. They've thrown that out now, and now they have a list of items: drinks, excluding alcohol, uh, drinks and rice. And for every one percent increase in a tax, they know. I mean, these Ministry of Finance bureaucrats, they have this down pat. I mean, they they watch the economy, and they're very good with numbers. And they they know that it's not going to be what they wanted, mm -hmm. and. Basically, well, if they wanted, I mean, it would have, it would completely put a break on the economy because they want more, and um, you know, I think the economy will basically sputter if if they went, you know, eleven or twelve percent. No, they they certainly there is a disconnect between economic planning. There is certainly a disconnect between economic planning and tax management, no question about that. And the finance ministry is just not a growth economy ministry. Mm -hmm. It's always been a balanced budget ministry, and they, they, they've just never been on, on track. Let's talk about the Ministry of Finance and the Tax Council. I mean, there's, there's a separation there. There's a committee that is run uh, formerly by uh, Mr. Noda. Uh, they, knew, they have a, a new um, uh, cabinet. It's not a new cabinet post. They have a new uh, committee chairman there. Um, things are changing, but these, these two bodies are, are very different, and this tax committee is one of the most powerful, isn't it? It's, well, the, the, traditionally, within the LDP, they didn't really care about legislation. They let bureaucrats write legislation. Bureaucrats would write it. It would be kind of vague because bureaucrats were writing it for themselves. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have as much leeway as to go. There was more interest in budget. You could, you could pass a budget. You only needed the House of Representatives, so it was an easy thing for politicians to do. But the thing they really obsessed about was the tax commission. Mm -hmm. they, that has been all, traditionally the LDP's absolutely most popular and most focused uh, place within their organization and without, within the, the uh, relationship between the bureaucracy and the party. So one of those is really focused on distribution of, and the other one is really interested on the collection. Yeah, but in the, the collect, but f even, even though there's the famous idea that there's nothing but that the LDP is only interested in pork bar barrel mm -hmm. projects and subsidies and all that from the budget, they are equally, if not more, interested in the way the tax system is structured. So that the tax committee that you're talking about is at, and, and the council is incredibly important in terms of the focus of attention mm -hmm. of the party and its members. So having this coup d'etat happen is a major power change within Japanese politics. No question about that. Exactly. No question about that. But the diet session has been closed, but these two um, committees within the upper house and the lower house are still meeting. And they'll, they'll still meet, and they, we can pretty much predict there will be some kind of bill produced ready for, ready for January mm -hmm. uh, for the start of the new uh, regular session in 2016, that it will be a big part of the Komeito's and also the LDP's uh, promises and also their campaign literature for building up to the House of Councilors election but that it will have a life beyond there. Right. That's the deal. It's, this is not merely some, uh, some song and dance that'll die off immediately after the election takes place. No, it's going to be on the books and it's going to be meaningful and it's going to require a lot of adjustments for a lot of particularly the smaller uh, retailers. Okay, fine. But the, within the LDP, they just look at the small retailers and say, look, it's seven million Kometo votes versus you guys. Mm -hmm. What do you got? And the small retailers say, we don't have seven million votes to give to you. Right. And they say, well, then, then, then stick it. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's tough, hard-nosed politics. There's a lot of hard-nosed politics going on. What are these fellows talking about in the upper house and the lower house? They're not talking about whether the implementation of the tax is going to be 
on different dates. It's going to be on one date. That's already been publicly stated. So they're probably talking about the inclusion of food stuff, the exclusion of food stuff, the inclusion of drinks with food stuffs, that sort of thing. And the thing is, is how is the uh, DPJ going to respond? Now, the DPJ itself was a, wanted to have a two-tiered system. So it will. It, there's a there's a political danger if it tries to argue for some kind of. We we have to maintain uh, a a credible fiscal story. That unfortunately is the tradition within mm-hmm. the the DPJ that they they deviated from in order to get elected in two thousand nine. But the the long term tradition of the DPJ is sound fiscal policy, uh, simple rules. Everybody has to follow them. And we'll see if in the diet session they fall into that trap because there's really a, it's, this is a no win situation. They cannot argue against a reduction or or the lack of an imposition mm-hmm. of the increase in the tax. Sure, if they want to, they could try, but it, that it, it's it's got no political legs whatsoever. Well, there were a couple of uh, balloons that were floated just this last week. For example, let's raise it. Uh, 9% to certain issues. Let, let's not leave foodstuffs at 8%. Let's move them to 9% and uh, 10% for everything else. I mean, a lot of things are being talked about. And there's also a suggestion that why don't we have this diet session? That came up just you know, over the last two days. Yeah, there, there's certainly, that's the latest ploy that's being thrown out. And maybe by the time this broadcast is edited, it will have died as many initiatives have died uh, and many uh, uh, trial balloons have crashed to earth. Yeah, there, there are all kinds of variations that are now being discussed, mm-hmm. but, but that indicates that there's a main theme and that that main theme has been decided and that there is going to be a two-tiered system. Right. Again, it's not unusual internationally. Uh, the issue will be, of course, the lobbying that's done in terms of getting in the, the, the set or being excluded from the set of items that are necessary for daily life. That's right. Well, the diet is awful crowded these days with guys like me and you wearing suits and visiting members of the diet. I was passing by the finance ministry this morning and just watching the crowds leaving for the lunch. And a lot of them have little badges from all kinds of different corporations sure. from all over Japan uh, coming in. And, and having their little talk. You have to. It's the way things are done. And to promote your interests, you need to step out front and you need to stake a claim. Otherwise, you're just going to get walked right over. That's right. And, and the thing is, is that it is a representative democracy, but there's a lot of direct democracy that happens in terms of taxation. And you really do have to show up in person to complain. Yeah. That, and in, if you're not if you're not a corporate executive, if you're not in a, a religious organization, or in some sort of a business association, or you're, industry, you're going right? you're going to not have that say, and the majority of Japanese will not have a say in what happens regarding the the consumption tax. But most people are for a two tiered system. Right. That the polls find that about it's a, almost two to one. What does this have to do with TPP? What this has to do with TPP is that you're going to be taxing items that are coming in. And a tariff is a tax. Mm -hmm. The tariffs will be reduced. So the price of items should conceivably go down. At the same time, the 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 tax, the consumption tax will be raised. So you're you're working at cross purposes. And that's an issue in terms of food. There are economists who have, have calculated that the extra that Japanese pay for food, whether it is due to tariffs or whether it is due to subsidies that are paid. Or protections, right. Or all kinds of, that it reduces Japanese growth by a significant amount. That keeping the agricultural sector alive in Japan in any way uh, is a huge fiscal drain. So the concept of, of this uh, protection that's going to happen of the agricultural sector in response to TPP. Now, we have all these wonderful schedules inside the, the agreement, supposedly, for reducing tariffs and liberalizing trade. But at the same time, for every step forward, there's a step back. Right. And currently, the Abe administration is just basically thrown open the store saying, what do you need to, in, to as an adjustment for the next 10 years or so in order to prepare you for right. the, the impact? So that the, it, it's affected by TPP in a way that TPP is supposed to make 
things cheaper, right? But things aren't going to be cheaper. It's not, it's not going to be ostensibly for the consumer. The food is not going to be cheaper. Uh, purchasing things are not going to be cheaper. So there, the messaging in terms of we're involved in TPP in order to increase efficiency and do the right. It's it's not going to. It's, well, it's, it's all a, a, a jumble. Yeah. Well. Well. The hope is that it increases availability, selection for consumers, and eventually, you know, prices are are homogenized throughout the region. Um, but initially, when TPP kicks in, I mean, they've given it a long um, uh, growth period. I mean, five years for some of these uh, tariffs to. To reach zero, so there is a significant period of time where there's a, a double taxation issue. They're paying for the subsidies. They're also paying for the consumption tax. And the cons- and what will happen is is that polling institutions and, and political parties will put the question to the consumers: Do you feel the impact of these government initiatives? And they will the the answers will be always in the negative that right. there is there is has no, your life improved? Has your life improved? And they'll always say no. Right. Because there are all these different impositions of taxes and reorganization of taxes that that leave the average Japanese in pretty much the same place. Okay, so why go to the trouble? Because in for this particular election, the Kometo wants to have some kind of sales point. Mm-hmm. And this is the sales point. We were able to pull out, like we're pulling teeth, a temporary, possibly, cap on the consumption tax for food items. Aren't we good? That aren't we aren't we great? Yeah. Isn't it great that we're tied to the the LDP? You know, we we've done our job. And that's not that's not just to win votes, that's also to consolidate the the message to the base, right. which is the Soka Gakkai organization and specifically the most powerful part of the Soka Gakkai religious community which is the married woman's association within it. Mm-hmm. That it's it's the focus, anyone who ever talks about Japanese politics in terms of the coalition has to understand that the, the, the lobby that must be served is the married woman's association of the Soka Gakkai. Even 30, 40, 50 years ago when the nuclear family unit was the foundation of, of the Japanese economy, that was still the case, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the case, but uh, we now have a situation in Japan where the nuclear family isn't. That's right. The nuclear family, just recently, I think it's in 2010, the number of people living alone surpassed the nuclear family as the main form of Japanese family, is a single person living alone now, in term, statistically. That should have brought about some kind of shift in behavior. Mm-hmm. But instead, because of the power of the Married Women's Association of the Soka Gakkai, the shift in taxation, the shift in lifestyle choices has been kept at bay. Mm-hmm. We are imposing 1970s style family values on the system. And that's what's going to happen. Just, it's, just, it's just a given. Right. But otherwise, I mean, you can see real structural changes in the dynamics within politics. I mean, there are, there are two members of the parliament right now who are um, publicly... Um, Bisexual, and they're not they're not shy about that. And this is more an accepted thing. I mean, the the mayor of Shibuya Ward is a supporter of of um, you know more encompassing uh, lifestyles. Um, I don't know what that does to the population growth, but apparently it makes a certain segment of the population you know happier. You know, different living arrangements are seen as you know. Not, not taboo and not something that you shouldn't talk about. Yeah, but we, that's an assumption that Japan has a fully representative government, which anyone who looks at Japan will know that that's not the case. Mm-hmm. We're, we're dealing with a major disconnect between Japan as an international globalized trading nation that is a modern industrial economy and the people who are in the diet and how they got to the diet, mm-hmm. whether it was by inheriting the seat from a, a parent or a grandparent or from the father-in-law, whatever, whether they are representatives either openly or surreptitiously of a religious community. The diet is, is not reflective of the major populace, and that's, a, that's just a, re, a fact of life. Mm-hmm. And in order these, for these tax issues and these issues having to do with social welfare, 
they have to be sorted out. And I, one, one can be very, very sympathetic toward the finance ministry because it knows. It knows what the statistics are. It knows what the, the actual status quo is out there. And then it has to deal with these ideologues within the, within the diet. And its position is untenable. So in terms of the consumption tax, I mean, that's a broad look at it. But in terms of the consumption tax and the, 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 the changes that have been discussed and, and the, the political action the last few weeks, it's all based upon a model of the family that actually doesn't exist anymore. And the need to respond to an organization that has as its basic format that nuclear family and with a patriarchal male head who is providing for most of the, of the money. All these things that do not reflect the transformations in society. Well, once again, it's, it's just interesting. This is our burning issue today, a revisitation to the Japanese consumption tax issue. Um, there is a lot going on there. There are a couple of things that we can say for sure. The tax will be uh, implemented in April 2017. And there will, at least some items will be at 10%. We know that. Some items will be at 10%, but there's a, a very strong possibility that foods, perishables, drinks, excluding alcohol, will be in that 8% range. And the imposition of that tax will happen on the same day it'll be a simultaneous imposition. And then in a few years time, the, the finance ministry will say that the tax is too low, yep. and we'll go through this rigmarole one more time. Right, how about predictions? What, what do you see in the near term? The near term that this will be a major political uh, victory for the Kometo, and they'll use it and promote it highly for the House of Councilors election, and they'll do very well. It will not, however, uh, make them more competitive toward the uh, lower classes in society uh, as compared to the Communist Party. The Communist Party also is very well organized and also has a very strong message of helping people out. So that in terms of gaining new voters, it's a wash. Mm -hmm. I can say that both will do very well based on their base vote, but that it's not going to really sweep things in Komeito's way. But that wasn't actually the purpose. The purpose is merely to show the, for the party, Komeito party secretariat to, to show the women's division of the We Soka stood Bama. up for you. We stood up for you and let the chips fall as they may. The idea, of course, that Japan is a country of equal citizens and equal treatment under the law takes a beating mm -hmm. uh, because this special group gets served. Is there anyone who's going to enforce that concept? No. No. Uh, yeah. the, the, the finance ministry may want to but they're not going to get their way. But all traction on this prediction that you've just given will be had before the end of the year. They will pass something or they will submit something. The diet will close. Not going to happen this year. It's too, it's too tricky, I think. They will have all kinds of meetings. So the horse trading won't, won't be finished this year? Not at all. I don't okay. think so. If, if it is, I would be very, very surprised. But they have a brand new person in charge and he doesn't have the ability to crack the whip. So what kind of uh, definitive result will business people have that perishables, foodstuffs, drinks, that sort of thing will be included in the 8%? When would that, that answer come out? Well, the, not even the, the Nippon Keidan, the major business lobby knows. Mm -hmm. They've certainly not liked the way the conversation has gone, but they may not, you know, they, they may understand that this is, this is not one of their battles. Mm -hmm. They may understand that the uh, the SOP that they're going to be extended is an accelerated pace of a re re reduction of the corporate income tax rate. Okay, thank you very much for that, Michael. I think with that, I'd like to close up uh, today's thrilling discussion on something that is not generally very thrilling. You've been watching Tokyo on Fire. Today's episode, episode number 30, our burning issue has been a revisitation to Japan's consumption tax. There's an awful lot of action going on now. According to Michael's prediction, nothing will be really settled out for another couple of months. We really won't know. The 8%, 10% delineation, foodstuffs, drinks will be included in that. We'll continue to watch that. Please stay tuned to Tokyo on Fire. You can contribute your comments, and we welcome your participation in our discussion. You can provide your comments to us via email at comments at tokyoonfire.com or alternatively via Twitter at hashtag tokyoonfire. 
Probably the best way, once again, to interact with us is by including your comments or suggestions or maybe your points of interest directly into the dialog box on YouTube. Also, don't forget that this podcast is available on iTunes. Thank you very much for watching. Please tell your friends about us. Hit that subscribe button. My name is Timothy Langley. See you next week.